Hello, welcome back. Regal Smith here. Today I'm going to teach you how to use the category of herbal essential oils. So a few weeks ago we started to learn about how to categorize our essential oils. We learned that florals tend to be great for skin health and hormones. We learned that wood and tree essential oils are extremely grounding and restorative. Citrus oils are cleansing and uplifting to the mood. And then today we're gonna to talk about the herb category. Now, if you notice, a lot of these bottles are green. These are a lot of things that maybe you've seen growing in gardens. They have a lot of culinary uses. They are very potent. And when I think about the categories of herbs, to me, they're very medicinal smelling, has a lot of medicinal uses, and they're very healing to the body. It is a little bit more diverse than some of the other categories. So what I'm gonna do is share with you a few of my favorite and practical uses for some of these herbal oils. And then I will have this cheat sheet written up with the herbal essential oils, some uses, and more details on each of these on my blog linked below on blissmama.com. So let's rock this out. Let's start with basil essential oil. Basil oil smells a little bit different than the herb. I like to use this for two reasons primarily. One, it's a great one to use if you have adrenal fatigue. Now, adrenals are on top of our kidneys and they help to calm that fight or flight response in our body. So if we're always go, 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 we're high stress, not a lot of sleep, or always in that flight mode, kind of just, I gotta keep going, your adrenals can get fried and mess up your hormones. So a great way to use basil oil is just add a couple drops to your hand. You can add a little bit of fractionated coconut oil as a carrier if you prefer, and just rub it on where your adrenals would be, so on top of your kidneys. So just right on your back, just a couple drops, and it will help to calm the adrenals. Another way that gets a lot of use, especially when my daughter was younger, is for ear discomfort. You know, when your little ones wake up in the middle of the night and they're tugging on their ears and they're crying and they're uncomfortable, basil. So basil oil works great. One of the precautions is we never put basil or any essential oil for that matter directly in the ears, uh, but you can put it around the ear canal or you can put it on a cotton ball and put that cotton ball right inside here. So we would do basil and lavender. That was kind of one of our favorite combos, sometimes basil and tea tree or sometimes all three, but for sure basil with a hint of lavender was one of our favorites of all times when my daughter would wake up with that discomfort, just a little tiny bit with a little coconut oil right around the ear or just on that cotton ball. Another oil that I like to use is rosemary. So rosemary can help with hair growth. And one of the easiest ways to use it is to add a drop each time you shampoo your hair and kind of massage it into your scalp, help to stimulate and get everything circulating. It has been shown to be as effective, if not more effective than some chemically created hair growth shampoos. It's all natural. I think it smells amazing. And if you're not washing your hair frequently, you can also make a spray with it. So just in a water bottle, there's not a set ratio. Just maybe think about like a four ounce water bottle. Put maybe 20 or so drops of rosemary. You could also add in there, in addition to rosemary, maybe 20 drops rosemary, 20 drops lavender is great for hair. Um, I have a spray that I also have that I add peppermint and tea tree because that will help to get rid of those little pests, those little lice that your kids tend to come home from school. So we use that on my daughter's hair, not for hair growth, but just to keep those at bay. But for hair growth, I like rosemary and lavender in a spray bottle. And just spray it and kind of brush it into your scalp as needed. Um, it works great. Right here, my hair grows in white, so I've got plenty of hair there. It's just all, it's growing in white. That's my version of gray. But it helps to help your hair grow longer and thicker. And then another thing I do with one drop of rosemary and one drop of lavender is to a brand new open bottle of mascara, a tube of mascara. I drop one drop of rosemary, one drop of lavender, you don't need more than that, into a new bottle because if it's almost empty, it'll mess up your mascara to oil ratio and just apply it to your lashes. I've had great success with helping my lashes grow longer. Uh, they now hit my glasses, which is something new for me. And uh, that helps, that has helped my lashes grow longer and it's really easy to use. Another one that I really like to diffuse is lemongrass. 
Lemongrass is the oil of cleansing. So if you're looking in the emotions book, it's an oil that helps to kind of cleanse and purify the space. It smells very purifying. It's one that we like to start to diffuse a lot during spring when spring is just around the corner. It's a great one that I like to diffuse when I'm cleaning. It smells fresh. Sometimes I like to put it on my dryer balls and helps my sheets smell delicious. And lemongrass, let me see if I can find a cute little passage about lemongrass. One moment. Where is lemongrass? The oil of cleansing. It says lemongrass is a powerful cleanser of energy. It dispels feelings of despondency, despair, and lethargy. It helps assist individuals entering into a healing mode or cleansing state. In this state, one can easily let go of the old limiting belief, toxic energies, and negativity. So great one. Also has some delicious culinary uses. You can make a delicious veggie dip, chip dip, ranch dip, whatever. Just take like sour cream, a packet of a ranch dip, a ranch mix that you like. If you use, I know some people use Hidden Valley. I use one from Simply Organic, which is just kind of like an organic version of that in a little eight ounce tub of sour cream, the small one, mix it up. And then a few drops of lemongrass is the best chip or veggie dip. Absolutely love it. Next is oregano. This one is extremely strong. It's not one you need very often, but it's one I recommend everybody has in their bathroom cabinet because you don't want to have to wait to order it until you need it. It has extremely strong immune supporting properties. It smells like a like a pizza ranch. It's very, very strong oregano. It's not one we diffuse personally, but it is one that we will put in capsules if we need it and take internally like little vegetable capsules with some on guard oil. It is one that we'll put in roller bottles and put on our feet and use along our spine diluted with fractionated coconut oil when we know the funk is coming and we just want to kick its butt. Now, all of these oils that I've talked about and a lot of the herbal ones, you can use in culinary things. So sometimes we will use oregano in a spaghetti sauce, like a tomato sauce, but the oils are so much more concentrated than the dried herbs. You kind of have to play around with the ratios. Once you get the ratios down, there is no flavor that matches the potency and flavor of cooking with essential oils, but it takes a little bit of art. Maybe I'll do a video on that. But for instance, if you're using oregano oil in a whole pot of spaghetti sauce, all you need is a toothpick dipped into your oregano and swirled into the pot. If you use more than that, it'll ruin it. But for instance, the cilantro, you could put a whole drop of cilantro in a fresh jar of store-bought salsa and it'll make it taste homemade. So you can use a little bit more, um, like the rosemary, you could put in a chicken marinade or a homemade salad dressing, just things of that nature, just a drop. But it does take some trial and error to figure out how many drops when you're cooking with the oils. It takes very, very little. But it's great if you run out of oregano in the cabinet and you know that you can use this from your oil drawer in your cooking. Let's just do a couple more. I'm gonna say, let's see, spearmint. So spearmint and peppermint are, are fairly similar. If you have a preference, to spearmint over peppermint. This is a great one to apply to your abdomen for digestive discomfort. Peppermint is also great, but the spearmint is a little bit more milder smelling and a little bit more milder feeling. I love to put a drop of spearmint in a quart of lemonade, so like a bottle of lemonade from the store during the summer and then pour it over ice. It's so refreshing in the summertime to have that spearmint la 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 lemonade. I was trying to say spearmint lavender lemonade. Sometimes I do lavender, sometimes I do spearmint. I've never tried them together though, uh, but a drop in a bottle of lemonade is absolutely delici delicious and so refreshing. And then another way that I like to use it in the summertime is to just fill a little tiny spray bottle with water, I don't know, 10 or so drops of spearmint oil and use it as a cool down spray. You could also do that with peppermint, which is another herbal essential oil. And then, Wintergreen is one that is really great for any type of discomfort and you want just kind of some relief. You'll notice it's a lot of the relief oils like deep blue and it is one that smells 
very minty. I actually had an opportunity to meet doTERRA's winter green growers in Nepal. And what I love about the doTERRA oils is behind every doTERRA oil is a story about the people that it helps. And these women of Nepal were so grateful and teaching us that they really didn't have any other way to provide for their family until doTERRA was able to go in, teach them about harvesting the winter green, paying them fair and on time wages, which is something that was very new to them and how to do it in a sustainable way that helped the environment and helped these people. Uh, while we were in Nepal, we were also able to be part of an initiative to build new schools that were destroyed after the hurricane. So they were able to have schools and then build a medical clinic for the community that we were in um, so that they had access to healthcare. There were women that are living on dirt floors with no roofs, having babies at home and dying because they didn't have access to sanitary measures. And because of this hospital, they could go and have a clean, safe birth. They could go with you know regular concerns that they may have and not have to ride hours and hours in a bus to get basic medical care. So that's one of the things I love about doTERRA. I think that's why the wintergreen has a special place in my heart. Sometimes I add it to blends, sometimes I add it to my bath, but when I smell it, it just reminds me of how much I love what doTERRA does for the communities. And then the final one that I'll mention today is Yarrow Palm. I did a whole video on this recently about using it for skincare. So you can use it with a gua sha stone or as a serum for your face or even with a derma roller. And I would say that's my favorite use, but also great at supporting healthy hormones as well. So that's a sneak peek at how to use some of doTERRA's herbal essential oils. If you have a favorite way to use one of the oils I mentioned, or perhaps one I didn't mention, please drop it below and let me know. If you need any doTERRA at wholesale pricing, which is 25% off retail, I can help you get a free wholesale account through my website linked below at blissmama.com. We'll see everyone next time and thanks for watching.